That became part of her character. It became this magical, wonderful, insane Alice looking through the looking glass kind of place. It was all discovery. The show is a hit, but there were still a few kinks to work out during season one, like finding the perfect director. After working on the pilot, Jay Sandrich decided to move on to other projects. I was doing Cosby, and nothing would get me away from the Cosby show. I mean, that was, it was, I guess, the first year of the Cosby show. Paul Witt and Tony Thomas were considering a number of candidates when one of the ladies suggested a British television director named Terry Hughes. It was about episode 10, I became available to do it. Be Arthur knew my work from England. She'd spent a lot of time in, Eng in England and in the theatre world, and she knew a lot of my work in England. And she had said to the producers, she heard that I was in the running for maybe coming in to do it. Terry, when he came in, my lord, I remember meeting him, at, we met him at a luncheon first. And oh, I said, I bet this man is it. This man's got to be the one. Yeah, and also how gorgeous he is. Is he not the most handsome thing you've ever seen? He's a brilliant director. He's more than competent. Uh, but his demeanor just made everyone so comfortable so that the petty tensions that can exist um, just, uh, just didn't. He uh, instinctively knew how long you could keep something going without its, you know, pooping out. And it's terrible to think that the, the two of you were almost kept apart just because Benjamin was black. <laughs> black? <laughs> Benjamin wasn't black, he was from New Jersey. <laughs> If you're getting a laugh on one line, you don't jump it and go into something else. At the same time, you don't wait until people start yawning. I went to my senior prom with a Yankee. The Golden Girls had a stellar cast, funny writers, and a talented director. That combination could only lead to one thing, awards. In the fall of 1986, the Golden Girls won an Emmy Award for Best Comedy Series, and Betty White took home her sixth statue. Yes, it was very special, and it, at, a, at an advanced age, you don't expect to ever have that happen again. To get to this point, you can't narrow it down any more than three. I mean, there ain't no way. I am the lucky one who gets to come up and pick up this beautiful golden girl. But Estelle and Rue and B and I all thank you. We're a match set. You can't split us up. The writers were also rewarded. Barry Fanaro and Mort Nathan won an Emmy Award for their episode called A Little Romance. It was a strange show and it was sort of, you know, uh, again had heart and that was when Rose dates uh, a midget. And then the conflict that resulted from that worked out perfectly. But Dorothy, he's a little early. Yes, but we're delighted to see him. That guy over there, is he a midget? <laughs> Yes. Thank God, I thought I was having another stroke. I think Jonathan's gonna ask me to marry him. When she feels that, you know, that their relationship will be prejudiced by other people, and in the end, he drops her. He said, of course, I cannot marry you because you are not Jewish. The ladies were great at reacting, and the absurdity of that situation just gave them marvelous, marvelous fodder. The Golden Girls weren't afraid of awkward situations. But in the next season, the girls were about to meet some interesting bedfellows. You rented a dirty movie? Dirty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> the Golden Girls was just a year old in the fall of 1986. The sitcom with a fresh take on senior citizens was on the verge of edging out primetime veterans like Dynasty and Dallas in the ratings. The Golden Girls gave viewers a look at a different kind of television family. You idiot! If somebody told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? I always get, well, my friends and I call ourselves the Golden Girls, and I always ask, which one are you? If she says Rose, then I know, well, she's not quite as swift as she could be. Fans identified with the Golden Girls, but the ladies behind the characters were much different from the parts they played. Betty is anything but Rose. I mean, that woman has the sharpest mind and uh, the quickest wit of anybody I ever met. So, I mean, that is, that's pure acting, to see her, the naive and the stuff flying over her head. One time, we were doing a television show where we had to hang her from a harness. She was swinging 
about 30 feet above the stage and we were doing take after take because we couldn't get it right and someone took me aside and said you should really bring Betty down for a while. Betty is, you know, in her 60s and she's been swinging from a rope for about four hours without a whimper of complaint. And I didn't even think about it because Betty was tireless. I'll make my famous ice cream clown sundaes. The one with the little raisin eyes and the sugar cone caps. If that doesn't fill the void, nothing will. <laughs> I think that there was a lot of Dorothy in B. Arthur. I think that B. Arthur, she was the smart one. She was the tent pole. She was the voice of, uh, of sanity. And she brought the most incredible taste in comedy. Well, what about Blanche? No, Blanche is not gay. <laughs> I never watched the show when I was doing it because I thought it would, you know, would cripple me. I thought if I saw it, I'd say, oh, God, why did I do that? Or why did I look that way? Sometimes she would doubt something, and she would need reassurance. And once she got that reassurance, she'd just go for it. But just total skill. <laughs> Ma, come on, it's not funny. <laughs> the hell it's not. B cracks me up the same way that I crack her up. She's one of the brilliant comic minds of our day. She's just that good. Estelle was new to all three of us. B and I had known each other. We'd been friends for ages. Uh, Rue and I had worked together on Mama's Family and on the Carol Burnett Show and stuff, so we knew each other. I think Estelle was pretty well awed by B. I got the impression that she really was a little intimidated by her, maybe. Though, uh, I'm just guessing that. And B would just, I, I think she just adored Estelle. I love B. Arthur like she was my own daughter. We do have that kind of relationship. I think of B very often in a very maternal way. Rue is, is, is a cockeyed wonder, the most, one of the most talented women I know. People always ask me, are you the same as Blanche Devereaux? And I always say, well, please just look at the facts. Blanche Devereaux was a man-hungry, uh, sex-starved, self-centered, glamorous vamp from Atlanta, Georgia and I'm not from Atlanta, Georgia. She would come into work sometimes and she would say, it was the weirdest thing. I was walking across the street and some construction workers whistled at me. I did that once. <laughs> and he said something pretty off color to me. And then she'd lean in and she'd go, I loved it. It was his birthday. <laughs> oh, I got several of marriage proposals through the years uh, from older men, younger men, and uh, I remember one particular invitation to come to New Jersey and have dinner with him and his mother. The Golden Girls weren't afraid to get a bit racy. And in season two, the ladies didn't shy away from sensitive issues. In one episode, lesbians became the theme du jour. Jean is a nice person. She happens to like girls instead of guys. Some people like cats instead of dogs. Frankly, I'd rather live with a lesbian than a cat. <laughs> That, I thought, was one of the funniest, one of the funniest opportunities for Blanche. I had a lot of wonderful things to do, but that scene on the bed when, when Dorothy is explaining to me that this woman who is visiting us is a lesbian. And I say, a lesbian? Well, what's wrong with that? Isn't Danny Thomas one? <laughs> the topics may have been touchy, but humor was always part of the equation. Not Lebanese, Blanche. <laughs> Lesbian. 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 And then she says, yes, and she's in love with Rose. And I get insulted and hurt. <gasps> Don't think Jean would prefer Rose over me? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Such an inspired turnaround. I love that, that, that few moments that I got to play there. It's so Blanche, it was dead on. And all that hard work paid off. The Golden Girls scored a few more home runs at the Emmy Awards in 1987. The show earned its second Emmy as Outstanding Comedy Series, while Rue McClanahan won the award as Outstanding Lead Actress. I wish Howie Mandel had studied my name. When he announced me, he said, Rue McCallaghan. I kind of wish that he had said Rue McClanahan, which is my name. But I thought, well, I'm going to call him Harvey Mandrell from now on. 
Rue McLennan didn't let that faux pas stop her from paying tribute to all of the Golden Girls.